Charles Ingalls is a name that is synonymous with perseverance, determination, and the enduring spirit of the American pioneer. His story is one of grit, hardship, and triumph over adversity. Known to many as the father of Laurel Ingalls Wilder, the author of the beloved Little House on the Prairie series, Charles was a man of many talents and a true jack-of-all-trades. From hunting and trapping to farming and carpentry, he embodied a pioneering spirit that characterized the American West in the late 1800s. But despite his many accomplishments, Charles's life was not without its struggles, and his final years were marked by tragedy and loss. William Charles Ingalls came into the world on January 10, 1836, in the small town of Cuba, New York. His parents, Lansford Whiting and Laura Louise Ingalls, were hardworking farmers who raised their sons to value perseverance and self-reliance. As a boy, Charles grew up in the dense forests of Wisconsin, where he learned how to hunt, trap, and farm. He was a quick learner and a hard worker, but life on the frontier was never easy. It was during his childhood in Wisconsin that Charles met Caroline, the girl who would one day become his wife. They were just children at the time, but even then, Charles knew that Caroline was special. He was drawn to her kind heart and quick wit, and they quickly became inseparable friends. As Charles grew older, he continued to work hard and build a life for himself and his family. They settled in the town of Walnut Grove, where they built a home and began to raise their children. But tragedy struck when Charles's mother passed away, and he was forced to leave his family behind to travel back to Wisconsin and handle the funeral arrangements. The relationship between Lansford and his son Charles had always been strained, but things took a dark turn when Lansford became despondent and attempted to take his own life by setting his house on fire. It was a terrifying moment, but Charles managed to save his father and convince him to come back with him to Walnut Grove. Despite their troubled past, Lansford began to form a special bond with Charles's daughter, Laura. They spent hours talking and laughing together, and for a brief moment, it seemed like they might finally be able to put the past behind them. However, their newfound connection was soon put to the test when Laura's beloved horse, Bunny, was injured while jumping over a wired fence. When Bunny, the horse, was injured, Laura was heartbroken, but Lansford, ever the optimist, promised to nurse the animal back to health. However, after seeing the extent of Bunny's injuries, Charles knew that the only humane thing to do was to put the animal out of its pain. Lansford was devastated and realized that he shouldn't have made such a promise to Laura. This incident caused tension between Lansford and Laura, and she was angry with him for breaking his promise. But despite their disagreement, Laura didn't want Lansford to leave Walnut Grove. She went out of her way to show him kindness and convinced him to stay as long as he wanted. In the end, Lansford did stay in Walnut Grove for a while, but he eventually returned to Wisconsin. Charles Ingalls was a hard-working man who did whatever it took to provide for his family. He worked at Hanson's Mill and farmed his land, but he often had to venture out of the area to find extra work when they needed more money. Once, disaster struck when their wheat crop was destroyed. Charles knew he had to do something to recoup their losses, so he hit the road in search of a job. It wasn't long before he met Danny Peters and Jacob Jacobson, who would become his companions on a new adventure. Peters helped Charles and Jacob both land jobs at a rock quarry, where they spent their days drilling holes in the rocks for the dynamite. They were so good at it that they even won a contest for being the fastest at drilling holes. But tragedy struck when Danny, who worked as a powder monkey, was killed in an accident with the dynamite. Charles and Jacob were devastated by the loss of their friend, and they knew they had to do something to help Danny's family. When they returned home, Charles gave Peggy Peters, Danny's wife, his pay and belongings. Charles cherished his family and had a strong bond with his wife Caroline. Together, they raised a large family and shared a close relationship with all their children. Charles had a special connection with his second daughter, Laura, and nicknamed her Half Pint during her childhood. However, when their mother became pregnant with their third child, Charles expressed his desire for a son. Laura felt jealous and hurt by this. Eventually, Caroline gave birth to a baby boy named Charles Jr. Unfortunately, the baby's health began to decline and he passed away a few months later. Laura blamed herself for not praying hard enough for him to get better and ran away from home. Charles went after her and they reconciled, rebuilding their relationship. A few years later, 
the Ingalls family took in an orphan boy named Albert. Laura initially felt jealous of him, but eventually learned to accept him as her brother. When Charles and Caroline decided to leave Walnut Grove, they welcomed two more children, James and Cassandra Cooper, into their family. Charles Ingalls was a man of his time, yet his personality was perhaps a bit more soft-spoken than most men of that era. He was a loving husband to Caroline and a caring father to his children. When he did need to lay down the law, it was usually more of a tough love approach, though not always the case. One day, the Gallander brothers came to Walnut Grove and attempted to rape Caroline. Charles was furious and went over to the cabin they were staying in to confront them. A physical altercation ensued, and Charles ended up getting beaten by Sam and George Gallander. Later on, Isaiah Edwards found Charles lying unconscious in the back of his buckboard. Although Charles lost the fight, the Gallander brothers' reign of terror came to an end, and they were forced to leave the town. Charles Ingalls was not one to resort to violence, preferring to handle things peacefully. One of his most admirable qualities was his willingness to take in those who needed help when no one else would. He was always ready to lend a hand to those in need, even if it meant going out of his way to do so. One such person was Todd Dortmunder, whom Charles took in after his employer couldn't manage him. Charles helped to rehabilitate Todd and get him back on the right track. Another person Charles helped was Graham Stewart, a young boy who was often beaten by his alcoholic father, John. Charles allowed Graham to stay at his home with Caroline and their girls while he helped John break his addiction. Despite his kind and gentle nature, Charles was not immune to accidents. While trying to retrieve a kite from a tree during a family picnic, he fell and broke several bones. Dr. Baker advised him not to do any work while he recovered, forcing Charles to take a break from his usual duties for a while. Charles Ingalls was a hard-working man who was determined to finish his work at the feed and seed. He attempted to stack the grain bags but soon realized that he was unable to continue. His daughters Laura and Mary followed him into town and tried to do the work themselves, but they soon found that it was too much for them to handle alone. Thankfully, the men of Walnut Grove came to their aid, and together they were able to finish the job on schedule. As a result, Charles was able to keep his oxen. Charles Ingalls was portrayed by Michael Landon in the television series Little House. Landon was not only an actor, but he also wrote, produced, and directed many episodes of the show. His portrayal of Charles has been credited as one of the greatest television fathers of all time. In addition to his acting and behind-the-scenes work, Landon also had a hand in selecting the cast members who appeared on the show. On the various occasions, Michael Landon appeared on the cover of Television Guide, portraying different characters such as Charles Ingalls, Little Joe on Bonanza, and Jonathan Smith on Highway to Heaven. However, the satiric magazine Mad made a spoof on Little House called Little House Oh So Dreary. Charles Ingalls passed away on June 8, 1902, at the age of 62 due to cardiovascular disease. He was laid to rest in Dismet Cemetery, leaving behind a legacy of kindness and strength that inspired generations. Goodbye and rest in peace, Charles Ingalls.